I am Mark A, and in today's video, I'll be talking about villagers of the island of Atu, captured by the Japanese in World War II. I'll primarily be using information from our first-hand account of the book Atu Boy. Atu is the westernmost point on the Aleutians, which is an island chain in the state of Alaska. Compared to nearby islands, it has a lot of gravel and little sand. It was common for villagers to have Russian sounding last names because their ancestors were given them when baptized by Russian clergy. Examples include Golodov, Hodikov, and Prusov. Aleutians had no insulation and inside plumbing in their homes. They commonly trapped animals like foxes. Villagers worked hard and helped voluntarily, being a tight knit community of around 40 people. They were known as the happiest Aleutians because of living in remote isolation and were friendly and helpful towards visitors. Fox furs were used as a form of currency to purchase things like flour, sugar, and other food. In addition, they sold some of their fox furs to a boat that came from Seattle, which helped them make more revenue. Atuans mainly ate salmon, sea lions, and seals. Before the war, the Atuans suspected seeing Japanese mappers surveying the island. This is because they saw fresh footsteps on the sand of the beach while all the villagers were indoors. The American Navy warned the village elders of a possible Japanese invasion of the island. This prediction became correct. On June 7, 1942, the Japanese invaded the Alaskan island of Atu. A Japanese plane flew back and forth to the village at a low altitude, while Japanese soldiers came down a mountain closing in on the village. The first batch of Japanese troops fired at the village, capturing it without resistance. They allowed the residents to go back to their houses, having a soldier guard each of them. The villagers had to get permission from the Japanese to fish in order to get their own food and had to use wood from the boards of their homes since they were not allowed to hunt for firewood. The author remembers the second batch of troops consisting primarily of officers being very friendly, with a couple of them offering Japanese treats whenever he saw them. Another child from the village accompanied troops on boat rides and hikes, occasionally playing the guitar and accordion for them. In addition, the villagers enjoyed drinking sake, in Japanese beer whenever they were offered it. Due to the fear of an imminent American invasion, the Japanese army decided to move Atu's residents to Japan after the summer of 1942. The villagers of Atu became prisoners of war, being sent to Japan's northmost prefecture of Hokkaido. They were able to take their own supplies with them, such as a stove, barrels of salted fish, sugar, and flour. The first house they settled in was a vacant dormitory for railroad workers living with a Japanese policeman. The men and women were required to work in the clay factories and mines, although they did not have to work nearly as hard as the Chinese and Korean prisoners who had to march to work every single day. The Atuans had a meager diet of rice, bread, radishes, and a little fish. This diet caused several to die from malnutrition and food poisoning. This is primarily because it consisted almost entirely of white rice and were not given any fruit. A villager noted that the Japanese guards were hungry also, due to the Japanese losing ground in the war at the time. In 1944, the surviving villagers were moved to a larger house, which previously served as clergy quarters for a Shinto shrine. Since they were farther away from the clay mines, they no longer had to work. Another possible reason for this was their declining health. In Christmas of 1944, the Japanese policeman who lived with the Atuans obtained goat meat and turkey, having a celebration with dancing and an accordion performance. Due to the Japanese surrender, the Atuans were able to move freely throughout the city. The Atuans painted POW on top of the house they were staying in so American planes would know where they were. The next day, they received a parachute filled with drums of food. The author mentioned eating very well that day, remembering how good canned peaches were and American sugar. B 
Before the Atuans left on an American military plane, they had a sake drinking party with the Japanese policeman that lived with them throughout the war. While the Atuans were flying from Otaru to Okinawa, they viewed the destruction that was done by the nuclear bomb in Nagasaki. After two and a half weeks in Okinawa, they went on a plane to Manila. The author remembers having his first Coca-Cola and ice cream in Manila and watching movies on an American military base. This shows how isolated he was throughout his entire childhood. From Manila, they were sent to San Francisco, then Seattle. Sadly, the Atuans were not allowed to go back to their village by the American army. They thought there were not enough of them to sustain a village, so they sent them to the Aleutian village of Atka. In addition, there was a battle between the Japanese and American armies on Atu after the Atuans left, which further destroyed the island with artillery, bombings, and bullets. The author of Atu Boy, Nick Golodov, eventually went back to Japan in the 1990s. He met the soldier who he was with in this infamous photo and attended a conference on wartime reparations, speaking on behalf of the Atuans. Because of him, the experience of the Atuans during World War II are known to the world. Thank you for watching.